Let's talk about how to add select and multi-select to your Power Apps galleries. All right, when you build your Power Apps gallery, sometimes your users want a way to choose the things, right? Maybe you're trying to email off the chosen items, maybe you want to update those chosen items. And so today what we're going to work on is just the mechanics of adding the checkbox into your gallery and then how to select it, how to have select all, how to find out how many you've done. And we're going to make the UI a little fancy using some containers to kind of show and hide pieces. Sound like fun? Now let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Let's start by showing you a fancy demo of what you can do once you learn this core technique, right? We're not gonna get into all the fanciness today, we're gonna get into just the core, but either way, I want you to see what that will look like. So if we go over here and we click on this lovely little review, so this is an app that I've built for one of my upcoming classes, we'll talk about the app in just a second, but basically what you're gonna see here is that, you know, it's just a bunch of inventory items like you'd expect in a gallery, but we have the little check boxes over here. And so what we can do in this app, we're like, oh, you know what I really want is a bottle of Camus. Oh, that would be really nice, right? We'll get two of those, we'll get some tea, some vitamins, it doesn't matter. But as we're checking things, notice that when we checked the first item, this section right here automatically came up, right? Because the idea in this app, we'll uncheck them all again, is that when you check the first item, you might wanna check multiple, and then what we're gonna do is we can then enter someone's email address and mail that off to them, right? So we'll just send it to me real quick. So now once I put a valid email address, then I get the little send button if we click on that. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna email, and there you go, over on the right, you can see the email that I got, right, to me, and I put my name up there, and then we also CC the personal automatically that sent it, and then they've got the different items, and so I clicked on the link to the Camus, and that's why I see it here. If I click on the link to the T, it'll open another window and take me to the T, right? So deep linking as well. So today we're not gonna get into the sending the email, the deep linking, all that, but what I really wanna concentrate on today is teaching you guys how to create that multi-select that we just saw, and then how to show and hide this section here, okay? So let's jump over to a blank app. So this blank app, all I did was I added a data source ahead of time into my uh, Dataverse table. It could be any data source you want. Now, in order to build that type of custom experience, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to use a container. So we're gonna put an insert and a layout, and then we want to use a vertical container. Now I'm gonna take this container and just stretch it to kind of run this whole column of the screen. You would use it like you saw over there, use the whole screen, you know, size it the way you want. But we always think about containers as being just there for building responsive apps, but sometimes I wanna use it in a non-responsive app, but to add some responsiveness into that app, and that's what we're gonna do here. So now if we insert ourselves a label, and then right here we'll just call this employees, maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger, and then we'll center it up, right? Now, because it's inside of a container to set the width, I need to go over here and we'll say, hey, I need your width to be, you know what, just be the container size. Boom, okay? So there's that piece. Now we'll click on the container again. We'll insert ourselves a vertical gallery. We'll set the gallery to our table. I'm doing this on Dataverse, but we don't have to do that. Um, there you go, so we pulled those people in. And now what we wanna do is we wanna add the checkboxes. Okay, so to add the checkboxes, I'm gonna kind of take this and I'm gonna scoot this one over. I'm gonna scoot this one over. And once again, you could design this any way you want. We're just, we're not spending a lot of time there. And so then in your gallery here, all we need to do is insert, we'll search for a checkbox, just like so. Bingo, bango. Now right now the bingo, bango says option. We don't want that, so I'm just gonna delete the words. And then I'll just make the checkbox smaller so it doesn't take up so much space, right? Okay. So that gave us that design that we want, right? We want the users to be able to check those boxes. Now, how do we know when they've checked a box? So let's hit, uh, hold on the alt key so I can check a couple boxes real quick, right? So we've checked three. So let's jump out of the gallery for a moment and let's just go insert ourselves a label, okay? You know what, let's do it inside the gallery. Or not inside the gallery, inside the container. So we'll click on the container, we'll insert ourselves a label. I'm changing my mind on the fly. All right, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna reorder and move it up because I want it in the middle. And so right here, what we want to do is we want to know how many items are checked, right? Because that's the thing we want to get to is the table of checked items. So the easiest way we're going to do that right now is we're going to say, hey, I want to do account rows. And then we're going to say filter. And then what table do you want to filter? You want to filter your gallery. So in this case, it's gallery two dot all items. So if you're not familiar with gallery two dot all items, all your galleries have an all items property, which is the output of a table of the currently shown items in the gallery. So for us, all items is literally all those people you see there. But we're gonna do a filter there, and we're gonna say, you know, we wanna only see the ones where checkbox one, that's the name of our checkbox, dot value. Remember, checkboxes output true or false whether or not they are checked. And a filter statement just wants true or false. It doesn't care how you get there. 
So filter and gallery only show the ones where the checkbox is selected, right? So if we click on scuba down here, so we click on fourth person, it goes to four. We deselect me and Chewy, now it's two. Because this is returning all the items in the gallery. This is filtering just to the ones where the checkbox is true, where it's been set. And then we're just counting the number of rows in that table. And that's where we're getting the two. Kind of neat, right? So that's the core piece of this is understanding that by just adding a checkbox because gallery to all items returns it, right? If you change this to be employees name my table, then it would not have worked, right? Because the employees table does not have the checkbox. But gallery to all items has all the controls as well. So you can check their values. Yeah, kind of fun. Okay, so now that we understand that would be how that would work, what we could do here, so let's just kind of make this text a little bit more. Um, two, and we'll say boom, and we'll do this. Two items checked, right? But what happens now when we have no items checked? Okay, I don't want to see zero items checked. I want this to go away. So in order to make that go away, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this label and we're going to say, hey, your visible property, it is going to be, well, it's going to be, let's get the text again, right? Because that wrote most of the logic. So we know that this right here returns all the checked items, right? So we're going there, visible. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say is empty. Don't use is blank. I did that when I was testing. Is blank is for checking fields. Is empty is for checking to see if a table is empty. So we want this to be visible not when that is empty, but we want the opposite. So we're going to put a not around that. So right now, is this empty? That is true. The opposite of true, the not of true is false, so it's not shown. But if we select a person, as soon as we start checking people, then all of a sudden is empty is false. The opposite of false is true. And so that's why you see it. But if we deselect the people again, remember I'm holding down the alt key so I can click these boxes, then boom, we're right back to where we were. Kind of cool, right? That's one of the nice things about con using containers for this. The first time I ever did this solution, I basically was calculating the heights and the X's and the Y's, all that dynamically based on whether or not there was checked items. It worked, but it was a lot more effort for me. By putting this in a container, we've made my life super easy. I'm lazy. I like super easy things. Okay? So now once you kind of have got this here, you know, you might start to say, well, okay, well, now I also need like that send button, or I need a text input, or I need to blah, blah, blah. I don't care what you need, right? You understand how this works. What I want you to do is I'm going to go here, and now that I've got it working simplistically, I'm going to go back. I've got the container selected. I'm going to insert another container, this time a horizontal container. So this is inside the vertical container, right? We're nesting them. This container, I'm going to say, hey, reorder and move up, okay? And so we know that this logic is the logic that I really want for that container, right? So copy goes container. We're going to change its visible to be that. Okay, so now we're controlling it with that. We're going to go back to here. We're going to just change this label then to say, hey, you're just always visible. True. And then I'm going to click on the label. I'm going to say control X, control V. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Control X. Um, let's say control X again. Control X. I'm going to get in the container, container two, right? The wide container. And we're going to paste that in there. And then now I'm going to inside container two, I could insert the icon, the text input, the button, whatever it is you wanted to have happen in here. Great. And then once I've got all the pieces there, I'm just going to take container two and say, hey, your height over here, turn off flexible height and set your height to like 50. Boom. Maybe then inside the container, I'll say align everything vertical. So that's over here on the right. There you go. Oh, you know what? We'll even center this stuff up. And so now we've got that, right? Like now inside that container, you can build whatever experience you want. Labels, text inputs, buttons, icons. I don't care, right? That is what you now have the ability. And once again, that is only going to show up when that selects. Very cool. One other thing I want to teach you is this, right? And so that is how do I select all of these? So I'm going to put the select all button outside the uh, the container. If you wanted it inside, right, maybe I would have put it up here with employees. I don't know, right? Like you can decide where it goes. I, we just care about the functionality here for select all. Oh, now I did it inside the container. Like I said, I wasn't going to. Let's try again. Insert a button. Throw it over here. So with this button, all I really need to do, right, we're going to change the text to say select all like so. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to have it set a variable, right, because it can't change the controls, it can't select all the controls for you. That would be magic and we don't do magic. So we're gonna do something like this and then this, and then we're gonna say var select all, 
colon true, All right? So it's gonna create us a context variable that is set to true. And so then now we'll go in here and we're gonna say, all right, check boxes. Your default, where that right here, is going to be var select all. So by selecting all, that's going to set this variable to true, which will then change all these to selected. What? I know. And then if you wanted it not to be that, right? Copy, paste. And then maybe here you'd have a deselect. I don't know, right? Like there's like 17 ways you could go from here. I, I need you to understand the concept, how you design it. Doesn't matter to me. And now we can set that one to false and play. And so now we get rid of them all. We check them all. Once we've checked them all, we can uncheck two or three. What? Right? That's kind of fun. That's a lot of really cool stuff in a very short amount of time. Now, the other thing I will throw at you, if you're like starting to select this stuff and you're like, eh, what do I do with it? Like, so in the next video, so next week's video, we're going to talk about for all, like looping through this and like patching all these or something like that. Like we'll, we'll worry about that next week. But if you're trying to understand those, like you're like, how do I work with those? Well, it's that same filter, right? It's that whole, this is the table of stuff. So I can copy that. Let me go over here, like outside, and we do a gallery, gallery. And then we'll drag this over here. And so like we could set this gallery to be those filtered items. And so look, if we deselect all of them, there's nothing over there. If we select Greg and Chewy and me, there they are. Oh, you know what? Let's deselect again. They're back. Oh, we can't deselect because we're not using the variable. So then in order to deselect, what we could do is we go up here, right? You can't use the reset function on the checkboxes because they're inside our gallery and it's not allowed. But what you can do is you can create a variable, something like this, update context bar reset to true. And then I actually would take that same variable and set it back to false. So toggle it. Right? Toggling is what makes it happy. And so now you would go over to the checkbox and you'd say, hey, on reset, you would use var reset. So use that variable. So now if we click on deselect, it will set it to false and then it will have checked all of them. So that would be how you would make it so that if they manually selected, deselect all also still worked. Um, yeah, so that would do that. Let's see, let's make sure our select all still works. It does, our deselect all still works. Perfect. So there you go, kind of a fun little trick. All right, so hopefully this helps you get your wheels spinning on how all this works. If you enjoy this style of working through an app, solving problems, iterating through, right? Like this is, remember that uh, app I showed you in the beginning, this whole inventory list? So what this is from is the upcoming live class I'm teaching here at the end of January called Master the Art of Power Apps Building, right? 301. And so that live class, we're going to build this whole app you're seeing here end to end with all the mechanics, the API calls, all of the niceties. And we're gonna work through it in a very, you know, adventurous type of way which will be very practical for real world app building. So if you want to check that out, you can, or if you just want to download the app that I just built, so not this, this beautiful one, but if you want to download this one with all the select dolls and all that in there, that's also available through the resource library over on training.powerapps.com. Questions, comments, ideas. Remember next week we will introduce for all, we'll take this app and we'll talk about how once we've selected a bunch of them, how to update those in the data source, looping through and just kind of the mechanics of for all. Should be fun. Anything else I can do for you? Holler, leave me below. I love to hear all the different ways we apply this stuff. And with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.